All right, so welcome to Unit 6. This is all about using data to solve problems. And the first thing we're going to look at is a very simple form of a data visualization. And this is actually a hand-drawn map of London in the 1850s. And it was drawn by someone um, called Jon Snow, which is kind of funny if you like Game of Thrones. Um, I think. But the idea was people in the city were getting sick with cholera. And so they, Jon Snow was like, okay, well, let me see if there's a pattern to this sickness, which was actually a very new um, thought in the day. And so he drew a map of, you know, kind of the area that it was infected, um, that people were getting infected. And then he just drew little black lines um, at the homes that people were getting infected by. Um, so if we zoom in a little bit, um, you can sort of see many of the cases are on Broad Street, um, right around here, and um, there's a lot of other cases sort of centered around there, um, but it's kind of hard to see, um, you know, a real pattern except for it's, it's, it's on, it's sort of centered around here, and if we, but if we zoom in, he put something else that was very important on the map too. Um, he put a pump, so that's what this is, P-U-M-P. Um, and there's a couple of them that he had in the map when we, when we zoomed out. But this one he figured out just from um, looking at this map, oh, it's all centered around this pump. And then he started interviewing people that weren't around that pump, and it turns out that that pump was on their way home or um, near their work. So basically the, he figured out that this pump was infected um, and told people stop using that pump and he stopped the um, he stopped the spread of the illness so just using data um, visually sometimes can be really important and that's what we're really going to focus on in this unit um, is not necessarily processing the data or, or making our own data visualizations but thinking about um, what others have made and what conclusions we can draw from them so let's go ahead and just look at a um, completely different one now, we're not really going to draw any conclusions from this, but the idea is just to get your mind used to looking like a data set like this because you're going to be looking at a couple others. So this is something called a heat map, um, and I'm showing you temperature, but don't be confused. Heat maps can be used for other things besides temperature. So let's take a look at what the x-axis and what the y-axis are first, and then think about what the colors mean as well. So... The y-axis is the hour of the day. So this is 0 is midnight, and then we have 6 a.m. going up, then noon, then 6 p.m., then midnight again, basically. So what this is, if you look, this one little tiny little line here is one day from midnight to midnight. Okay, so from the very start of the day to the very end of the day. And then it just goes over one tiny little pixel and goes back down. And it does this for the whole, a whole year. So January, February, March, April, May. So each tiny little up and down line is a day. And so there's 24 little dots that make up this, this day. And the color of the dots corresponds to this color scale on the right is temperature. So this is pretty incredible because if you do the math, there's 365 days a year and there's 24 hours in a day. If you multiply those two together, there's 8,760 data points just in this one little, little little visualization. So you can see a lot of information here. Um, temperature is the easiest thing. Our eye um, can see the patterns pretty easily, as well as we sort of know what temperature is like. So if you were to think about and describing how this um, how this graph is constructed and how um, you know the temperature patterns are here in the middle of the day in the summer you know, from noon to 6 p.m. are when the hottest temperatures happen, right? The red is in the 90 to 100 range, and the orange is from the 80 to 90 range, right? So that's when the hottest temperatures of the days happen. And then the darkest things, like the real black or the dark blue, happen at night, and sort of in the a.m. hours mostly are the really cold temperatures, in the winter, so in this case in January. Okay, and then the other temperatures, you know, it's sometimes mild in the, um, you know, in early March or late March, 
Um, and it, it kind of makes sense the how this works. And then it's still warm in the summer nights. Um, that's my least favorite time. I, li I like it to be cool at night. But anyway. Okay, so now we have an idea of how these heat maps work. But the big thing about heat maps, again, is they don't always talk about heat. So let's look at another one. So this is a plot of how much energy, so this unit of energy is kilowatt hours, so how much electric energy this high school uses. Okay, so this is electric energy of a high school. That's what the HS stands for. And it's the same thing. It's the hour of the day here, and it's the month of the year here. The only thing that's different about this one is it's missing some data for September, so this isn't actually what's going on here. Um, it's just this whole black block is just a, a, a missing data point. Um, there's a couple cool things you can see about this. Right away, you kind of see that there's like these dark blue lines that happen like periodically over time. So just take a second, pause the video, and see if you can figure out what's going on there. Okay, so hopefully you paused it. So another hint, if you weren't sure, is that if you count, like let's look at March, these lines happen about four times, maybe five times a month. So hopefully you were able to think about that these are weekends because the school is not completely occupied in the weekends and so it uses less energy on the weekends, right? Another thing you might notice here is that at the end of December, and at the end of April, there's sort of like a drop in, in energy as well. And so just take a second and pause it and think about that. So hopefully you realize that's probably spring break and winter break. Okay, so you can see a lot of things just from this little graph, right? If you didn't see these breaks for the weekends, you might realize that the school, maybe the lights are in, and the heat and the air conditioning are left on all weekend long. Same thing for spring break or winter break. You could probably see that right away if another school didn't have that going on. Okay? So you're going to have a chance to think about more of the patterns that you see here. Um, but you're also going to look at the differences between that and this is a middle school. Okay? So same type of deal. We see spring break and winter break. And we see those, those vertical lines. And there's some other things that are happening here too, but I want to leave it up to um, to you as a question. So for a mini discussion board question, you're going to have this. Which one, so you have an energy audit, which one would you give an energy audit to and why? And if you're not familiar with an energy audit, basically it's someone going into the school, figuring out where they use energy and how they can reduce it. So there's no real right answer to this question, but you have to back it up with and why. And you should talk about the trends in the data or, or how you're using the data to make this decision. And this is a decision that real schools and real school districts have to make all the time. Okay, so that's what I want you to think about. And thanks for watching this video.